All right, guys, we're doing 9.3 and 9.4, which we've cut down to just two, actually three learning targets total, okay? So we're doing little bits of 9.3 and 9.4, and those are together in one section on the quiz. They're actually, it's called 9.2 on the quiz because that's the, the section we lumped them all into. Everybody ready? All right, so today we have to be able to convert from polar to rectangular and rectangular to polar. And then we're going to look at finding eccentricity. And all of this third learning target is just using the recipes that are on the pink sheet. Okay, the little pink half sheet. All right, so we talked about learning to graph on that circular graph paper. Remember this, guys? So we had something like, oh my goodness, that's awful. Okay, just forgive me. Uh, that point right there might have been 290 degrees. Do you remember this, guys? Today we're going to talk about how to switch that back into rectangular coordinates. Well, that one isn't hard, if my circle looked better here. It's over zero and up two, right? That's the rectangulars for that point. Not complicated. But if you have something that's out here at pi over 4 and it's 6 units out, we need to talk about how to change that back into an x and a y. And it's really vector components. Does that make any sense, guys? This is cosine and sine. So it's pretty straightforward if you remember what we've been doing. Okay, hang on. Let me move that out of the way. Okay. Um, so it says here if you want to if you have the radius and the angle and you want to find the x and the y it's just cosine and sine or cosine equals x over r so if you multiply to get the x you'd have r cosine theta does that look like the components for a vector r cosine theta r sine theta yes everybody with me Okay, so another picture, same thing. Um, this one talks about going back the other way. When you have the r and the theta, um, I'm sorry, when you have the x and the y. So I know I went over 2 and up 5. If I want to find the r, how could I do that? Help me out here, guys. If you went over 2 and up 5, how do you find that R? Pythagorean theorem, right? And how do you find this angle? We know opposite and adjacent, so we can do inverse tangent, y over x, okay? These are all the same things we did when we were doing vectors. That's why they're in the same section, okay? So we're going to do inverse tangent. I don't know if you remember this, but if you're in the fourth quadrant, you have to add 180 when you do inverse tangent to get back around to the second quadrant. We'll talk about that, but that's what this is all about. All right. So here's an example. It says when r is 3 and the angle is 3 pi over 4, how do you find the x, y, or rectangular coordinates? You need to remember that. Rectangular coordinates means you want an x and a y. Okay, so you do r cosine of 3 pi over 4 and r sine of 3 pi over 4. Now, they want exact answers, so you take your little pink unit circle, yes, and you find the sine and cosine at 3 pi over 4. Uh, negative square root of 2 over 2, mm -hmm. is that right? and positive square root of 2 over 2. How did I do? And then you just multiply them together, and you get this ordered pair. So let's try these. Wow. We don't have to graph this. That's a really big R, right? That'd be a big graph paper. But if we have this and an angle of negative 60, so we're just doing 20 cosine of negative 60. It says find the rectangular. So we're looking for x and y. 
and 20 sine of negative 60. All right, now we look at our unit circle. I wonder if I can put a unit circle on here quick. Or not. All right, so down here at 300 or negative 60, the ordered pair would be one half negative square root of three over two. Is that correct, guys? Somebody check me. So the cosine is one half, and the sine is negative square root of three over two. So what happens when I multiply those? What x, y ordered pair do I get? 20 times a half is, and 20 times negative square root of three divided by two would be, two goes into 20, 10 times, times negative square root of three would be negative 10 square roots of three. Are we lost? Just 20 divided by 2 is 10 times negative square root of 3. Just leave it without typing it in. We want exact answers for these. On the quiz, if it's a multiple choice question, there'll be exact answers. Otherwise, I don't care. You can give me exact or decimals. What mode would you have to be in for that question, though? If you're typing it. Degrees. This is degrees because this was degrees here. Yep. This one's radians. You're right. Okay, when we graphed this, we went to 5 pi over 6 and backed up 1. But just leave it for the r and the theta, and I'll show you what happens. It's going to fix itself. So we have negative 1 cosine of 5 pi over 6 and negative 1 sine of 5 pi over 6. Um, the ordered pair at 5 pi over 6. I'm thinking negative square root of 3 over 2 and positive 1 half. Is that right? Someone checking me? 5 pi over 6. Square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half, right? Okay. Uh, so we have negative 1 times negative square root of 3 over 2 and negative 1 times 1 half. So we get positive square root of 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. What quadrant is that in, guys? If you go to the right, square root of 3 over 2 and down 1 half, you'd be down here in quadrant 4, yes? Is that where we would have graphed this point if we went around 5 pi over 6 and then backed up 1? Okay, so the negative and the fact that we're backing up took care of itself when we use r cosine theta, r sine theta. All right, two more quick. Cosine negative 135 and 6 sine negative 135. Negative 135 is here at positive 225. So what is the ordered pair? Cosine and sine. Come on, guys. Pink unit circle. This is Important to doing well on the quiz on Wednesday. Cosine and sine right here. So we have 6 times negative square root of 2 over 2. And then 6 times negative square root of 2 over 2. And how is that going to reduce? So we'd have negative 6 square root of 2 over 2. What does that reduce to? Negative 3 square root of 2 and negative 3 square root of 2. All right, one more here. 3 and pi over 3. What is the ordered pair up here at pi over 3? OK. 
okay? So if we do this r times this cosine, 3 cosine pi over 3 and 3 sine pi over 3 becomes 3 times 1 half and 3 times the square root of 3 over 2. Um, that doesn't even reduce, right? You get 3 halves and 3 square roots of 3 over 2. We good? So it's just r cosine theta, r sine theta. If we are going the other direction, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem and the inverse tangent. And you do, I hope, remember that if we do inverse tangent and we get like negative 60 degrees, we probably need to add 180 into this quadrant. It depends on the ordered pair that we're given. Okay, so here, Pythagorean theorem and inverse tangent. So this particular question had 5, negative 9. So to find R, I did Pythagorean theorem. 5 squared plus 9 squared is 106. Square root is 10.3. So R is 10.3. And then inverse tangent. Um, they want an answer in radians. So putting my calculator in radian mode. We do inverse tangent. This was negative 9 over 5. We get negative 1.06 radians. Okay. Is this the right quadrant? If, if I go over 10 and down 1.06, am I going to be there? Yep. So that's fine. They do say find two pairs of points in R theta. Okay. Anybody know what else we could do? Because this is an R and a theta. So it's said to rotate negative 1.06 and go out 10.3. What if we'd gone over here? Anybody know how we'd find that answer? I don't think I asked for two, two ways on the quiz. If this is negative 1.06 and we're in radians, how would we move around to the other side of that? Exactly. One pi, yes. So if we add pi to this, what's that going to be? point. And if we had gone around positive 2.08, we would have had to back up how much? This R value, so it would be negative 10.3. Okay. I don't think I gave, I, I did not require on the quiz that you do two different answers. So you could have just done inverse tangent and Pythagorean theorem. All right. So this, again, says two answers, but let's figure out if we can just do at least one. And it does say here this. What does that mean? What mode are we working with here? Guess? Yes, radians. So if we go 2, negative 2, does anybody know what angle that is in degrees right away? If you go over 2 and down 2, what angle would that make right here? Come on, guys. Over 2, down 2. 45, right? This is an isosceles right triangle. So if we were doing it in degrees, we could do it went down 45 degrees. All right, Pythagorean theorem is going to give us what? Anybody remember their special right triangles? 2, 2, and 45, 45, 90 is 2 square roots of 2. If you do Pythagorean theorem, you get 4 and 4 
is 8. So you have the square root of 8, which is 2 square roots of 2. There's your r. And then inverse tangent of y over x. So you're looking for where is the tangent negative 1. It actually wants an answer in radians. So if you look down in this quadrant, where's the tangent negative 1? Do you remember how that goes, guys? You're looking for an ordered pair like this. Would that make the tangent negative 1? Yes, 7 pi over 4 would work. What else can we call that? Could we just say we went negative 45 degrees or pi over 4? That's not really what they wanted here um, for our second choice. They wanted us to come up with an answer between 0 and 2 pi, and negative pi over 4 is not. What would the opposite be over here? What's opposite of 7 pi over 4 on your unit circle? Anybody awake? You could have gone 3 pi over 4 and then backed up 2 square roots of 2. But again, like I said, you don't have to do that on the quiz. All right. Is 3, 5 quadrant 1 angle over 3 up 5? This is once polars given rectangular. Rectangular means x, y, so these are x, y coordinates. How do we find r? The Pythagorean theorem, thank you. Uh, 34, maybe? All right. So we have square root of 34. And then we need an angle. Is this going to be a nice one? Is there a square root of 34 or a 3, 5, something on your unit circle? No. So how do we find this angle in here? Inverse tangent of what over what? Yes, opposite over adjacent or y over x. You, they want you in radians. Inverse tangent 5 thirds. One point oh three, anybody? All right. How about we just go with one? Is that good? Because that's all you gotta do on the quiz is one anyway. All right. It says find the polar coordinates of the point that have rectangular coordinates, so these are x and y. So if we want to go back to r, we need to do Pythagorean theorem. So this would be 9 and 9, or square root of 18, which is 9 times 2, so that makes it 3 square roots of 2. So I'm not this answer or this answer. Now, where is negative 3, negative 3, guys? What quadrant? Whoops. Negative 3, negative 3 is over here in quadrant 3. So what's the angle if I go around to there? I don't think it's pi over 4. 5 pi over 4 seem right, right? Because 3, 3 is a 45, 45, 90. All right, 4, 150. This time we're going the other direction. We have an R and a theta. That was for that question up above. When we have an R and a theta, we're doing 4 cosine of 150 and 4 sine of 150. So where's 150 on the unit circle? What was the ordered pair over there? Negative square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half, maybe? Is that right for 150? So 
So which ordered pair is correct? A, B, C, or D? Four times square root of three with a negative would be negative four square roots of three over two would reduce to negative two square roots of three. Four times a half is two. Um, that and C are the only ones even in the right quadrant, right? Four, 150 is here, so it should be negative positive. All right, you got it? All right, the second part of the lesson is using a recipe to define um, what kind of a graph you're going to have for a conic. Does anybody remember what the conics were that we did? It's all this stuff from Chapter 7. So we did parabolas. What else? And one more, guys. Good job. Okay. So we are talking about these, but they're going to be in polar. Okay. Polar form. So it's going to talk about a directrix today. And what's the only one we use the word directrix for? Do you remember? We had to find a directrix when we did parabolas. When we did parabolas, we had a directrix. But there is actually such a thing as a directrix for an ellipse and a hyperbola. Who knew, right? It says we defined a kind of section in terms of distance between the focus and the directrix or between two foci for an ellipse and a hyperbola. But in general, a conic section can be defined as a locus of points such that the distance from P to the focus and the distance from the point to a fixed line, the directrix, is a constant ratio. That's how we define parabola to begin with. We said this distance has to equal this distance, and that's what made the parabola. But it's also true, okay, of a hyperbola and an ellipse. You don't have to know this definition, okay? It actually, I think you don't even have to know this part. The eccentricity of a parabola is one. Does it already tell you, it says here you have to memorize these, that the eccentricity of an ellipse is less than one and a hyperbola is more than one. But isn't that on the pink sheet? I don't have my pink sheet. Yeah, but I think it's again on the pink sheet. Can you find if it talks about eccentricity again? Okay, but does it say parabola? Okay. Okay. The eccentricity of a parabola is one. Does Is it here in your little above it? Is it happen to say it in that little pink, in that box or not? Okay. If you want to write that on there, you can. For parabola, the eccentricity equals one. Okay. Make this as easy as I can. All right. These are the conic forms, or the polar forms, excuse me. Right here. So we have 1 equals something, I'm sorry, R equals something over 1 plus E cosine theta, or 1 minus cosine theta, or 1 plus sine theta, or 1 minus sine theta. What is the same for all those? They all have ED on the top. What else? Come on, guys. What do they all have? They all have a trig function, and what's out in front of the trig function? It's multiplied by E, 
and they all have a one out there, yes? Okay, this is the polar form of all the different conics. Whatever the E is will tell you the shape it's going to be. Okay, and the directrix is either X equals or Y equals, positive or negative D. Very important though, right up here, it says E and D by definition are positive numbers. Okay, so if there is a negative, it comes with the equation. It's not the sign of E. All right, so we are going to determine the eccentricity by figuring out what E is, and that will tell us what shape it's going to be. We're going to have to determine the type of conic. And then you're going to have to write the equation of the directrix, and for that, you're going to have to figure out what D is. So this is just using a recipe. It's this on the top of your sheet. Um, it's pink though, right? This is not, we just made sure that was all on there, didn't we? Did you write that on there or it was already on there? Okay. So here's the example that they give us first. What's wrong with this and all of the ones on our sheet? What is this number right down here supposed to be? A one. So we have to divide everything here by a three, okay? So if we divide this by a three, this by a three, and this by a three, we get a two on the top, and on the bottom we get one plus one sine theta. Now, the eccentricity is this number here. So eccentricity is just one, which would make it what shape? Did you just write down? parabola. And then on the top, this number is supposed to be E times D. Well, you just told me E is 1. So what does D have to be? Okay. Now, you got to look at the sheet again. We're looking for this formula. What is the equation there for the directrix when you have this set up? Is it X equals or Y equals? this one so it's what right back here it says y equals d so it's this y equals 2 is the equation of the directrix now if you think about that at all y equals 2 is up here it's this equation so I'm thinking this parabola probably opens down or it's up above here I don't know if I type this in I am in polars, okay, so make sure you are in radians and polars, and then go to R, and this particular one was 6 divided by parentheses, 3 plus 3 sine theta, is that what it was? Do I have that right, guys? Close, close. 6 divided by 3 plus 3 sine theta. All right, then if you do a zoom standard, do you get a parabola? Everybody good? Okay, the directrix would be up here at y equals 2. All right, this is not complicated, guys. This first one is super easy. R is the, This is already a 1, so what is E? E equals one half, and it's never a sign, it's always positive. All right, and the top is always equal to ED. So, how are we going to find D? If E times D equals two, you just told me what? E is one half. How do we solve that? Yeah, multiply a 2 onto both sides so that half of 2 over here will be 1. D equals 4. All right, for this equation on the reference sheet, 1 minus sine theta, it says the equation of the directrix is y equals opposite of D. So we're going to have y equals negative 4. So these are the two things you need numerically. The third thing you have to answer is what shape is this? 
if E is one half, anybody know? Eccentricity less than one, what is that? Look on your sheet. Eccentricity less than one. Ellipse. So those are the three things you have to tell me. And it's all just following recipes. If you graph this, two over one minus one half sine theta. Two over one minus 0.5 sine theta. To get an ellipse. Okay. Now, I wouldn't have known where to put the directrix, but that's what we have the reference sheet for. Okay. What's wrong with number two? It's not one. How do we make this a one down here? Divide everything by two. So we get r equals four over two becomes a two on the top, two over two becomes a one. 3 over 2 is just 3 halves. Now, because we divided by 2 top and bottom, we didn't really change anything. It's equivalent. So what can you tell me? Good job. E is 3 over 2. Does anybody remember what that makes it when it's more than 1? Good call. Hyperbola. Okay. Then we have to find the equation of the directrix. This number up top is ED. So if E times D is 2, what's E? 3 over 2. How do we get rid of a 3 over 2? Here we go again, guys. If you can't do fractions, you can be in trouble. How do you get rid of times 3 over 2? Multiply by 2 thirds. So we get D equals 2 times 2 thirds would be 4 thirds. Now, what is the equation, though? When it's 1 minus E sine theta, the equation is X equals or Y equals? We're still doing this one, right? 1 minus. So it's y equals opposite of d. So what do we write? y equals negative 4 thirds. Let's graph this one. Just 4 over 2 minus 3 sine theta. 4 over 2 minus 3 sine theta. Now, it actually connected and drew in the asymptotes. I think if you turned this on, to dot, it might not draw in those. Yeah, it just draws the hyperbolas. It doesn't matter. It's a hyperbola either way, right? All right. I don't think I'd bother to graph anymore, but help me practice these last two. Oh, there's a few more, I guess. But what are we going to do to all these? Divided by four. So we get three fourths over. Anybody? Four over four would be one. 2 over 4 would be 1 half. This time it's cosine. All right, so what's E? E is 1 half, which makes it a... Good job. Ellipse. And the top is D times E. And E is 1 half, so we have 1 half D equals 3 fourths. How do we solve for D? 
2 over 1. So we have D equals, this would be 6 fourths or 3 halves. Okay, now you got to look at the reference sheet. When it's 1 minus cosine of theta, what does it say for the directrix? Yes, 1 minus cosine theta right here says the directrix is x equals negative d. So we have x equals negative 3 halves. So these are the three things you have to be able to do on the quiz. All just following a recipe, guys. And try number four on your own. What'd you get for E? Which makes it ellipse again. Anybody find D? This is E times D, and E was 3 fourths. So what do we have to do to both sides? 4 thirds. So we have D equals 8 thirds. And is it X equals or Y equals positive or negative? The equation of the directrix is when it's 1 plus sine, it's Y equals positive, isn't it? Okay. So a couple quick questions here and we're done. Determine the eccentricity of this one. What is that on top, a 48? Lovely, okay. So we're dividing everything by eight. Oh, no we're not, I'm just kidding. What did they do on the bottom? If we rewrite that, it's 16 plus eight cosine theta, right? So what do we need to divide everything by? 16, so then we'll have 3 over 1 plus 1 half cosine theta if I divide by 16. Okay, so what is the eccentricity? E is 1 half. Number 6 says what would the equation of the directrix be? So ED equals 3. 1 half D equals 3, which makes D what, guys? 6. And if it's cosine, it's X, isn't it? And positive. So it's C. And what shape is that, then? If the eccentricity is 1 half, it's an ellipse. I'm curious if that one's really huge or something, or if it doesn't matter that it was a 48. 48 plus over 8, 16 plus 8 cosine theta. 48 over 16 plus, what was it? 8 cosine? I think I have that right now. Oh, it's bigger. Um, I have my calculator turned on dots, so if I turn it back down here on just thick, okay. The directrix was x equals 6, which would be a, a vertical line over here. All right, everybody seem okay? Pretty straightforward stuff. Um, the assignment. And you have time to get started on it now, guys, real quick. It's on 7B. I think it's all circled for you on 7B.